Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the VMCG, Minimum Control Ground Speed. By the end of the video you will know what the VMCG is, why it is so important and why the VMCG needs to be below the V1. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot. So if you don't want to miss the next content, please consider subscribing to the channel. All right, without further ado, let's talk about the VMCG. The VMCG, minimum control ground speed, is the minimum speed at which, using only the aerodynamic surfaces such as the rudder, you can maintain directional control of your plane in case of an engine failure during the takeoff. Okay, why it is only during the takeoff? Because since it's called VMC. G and G's ground is, apply, uh, is applicable to the takeoff phase, okay, the takeoff run, okay. So why this is so important? In order to understand why the VMCG is so important, we need to think about what will happen in case you have an engine failure during the takeoff run, okay. So you are on the threshold, ready to go, you set the takeoff thrust, you've got two engines that are providing the thrust, okay, the same thrust, and then suddenly one engine fails. So, since you've, you are on the ground and you are at low speed, what will happen is that the operative engine will start to give you a right moment, okay? So, your aircraft will start to turn to the right, okay? And if you are above the VMCG, you apply left rudder, okay? You apply with your foot, with your left foot, the, you, the full deflection, and then you're gonna be able to keep the center line of your, uh, of your run, okay? You, you're gonna still maintain the lateral control of your plane, okay? But why is a minimum speed and not a maximum speed? So as we said at the beginning, the VMCG is the a minimum speed at which using only the aerodynamic surface such as the rudder, you are able to maintain lateral, the lateral uh, direction, okay, the lateral control in case of an engine failure. But why is a minimum? It's a minimum speed because if an engine failure happens below the VMCG, your rudder doesn't have enough airflow around to produce, to be effective, okay? So if you have an engine failure below the VMCG, the, the thrust that the engine, the operative engine is producing you, the, the right moment, as we said before, is gonna be higher than your, uh, your rudder okay your rudder will not be uh, efficient enough to uh, maintain the control the lateral control okay that's why it's a minimum speed once you cross that speed you are faster you've got a lot more airflow around the rudder thus in case of an engine failure if you apply the rudder the rudder is efficient and is able to maintain your lateral control okay your directional control all right, so it is very important. And why the VMCG needs to be below the V1 and not vice versa? Because what we said, I made a separate video about the V1, but if something happens after V1, if you have an engine failure after V1, you cannot stop the takeoff. You cannot reject the takeoff. You need to continue, okay? So now think like that. Since if you have an engine failure after V1, you have to continue. But if you if your VMCG is above V1, okay, let's say you have a V1 of 100 knots and a VMCG 110 knots, okay, what will happen if you have an engine failure at 105 knots? It will happen that you're gonna go away, you're gonna basically make a veer off in the best case because since your VMCG is above V1, okay, you, you, your rudder is not efficient enough to maintain the lateral control, okay, the directional control. And that's why, that's the reason why the VMCG must be below V1 all the time, okay, because if something happened below V1, if an engine failure happens bef before V1, you have to reject the takeoff, okay? We don't always take off with the same thrust setting, okay? We can actually use the assumed temperature method. What will happen with assumed temperature method that we calculating the performance depending on all the environmental factors such as performance, such as uh, pressure, temperature, uh, conditions of the runway, weight, tailwind, and, and so on. We basically sometimes, uh, sometimes 99% of the time, we actually take off with a takeoff thrust that is below the maximum one. and Normally we just take the thrust that is enough to take safe to take off safely because if you have an engine that is producing less thrust, okay, but is enough for your weight and for the runway conditions, what will happen is that if you have an engine failure uh, during the takeoff, the yaw moment, okay, the right moment will be less because the operative engine, in case you have an engine failure 
with an engine that is producing less thrust is going to be less okay so it's easier to to control the aircraft on the uh, lateral and directional control during the takeoff in case of an engine failure okay this is especially applicable when we take off from a very uh, narrow runways okay i've been doing takeoffs from runways that were 30 meters uh, wide in that case you really want to, the, to do the assumed temperature method and take off with the minimum thrust uh, required to perform the takeoff safely, okay? Because if something happens throughout the takeoff, you have a, a, a narrow runway, you have less room to maintain the directional control of the plane, okay? So I hope you understood the VMCG, the minimum control ground speed. If you still have any questions, leave in the comment below and I will help you out. Also go to pilotclan.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.